Good morning and welcome to worship. We are gathered as the people of Fieldburg Lutheran Church, and this is the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of generosity and grace, we thank you that in your Son, Jesus Christ, you come to us. In our trouble and in our winds and storms of life, be near. Show up even when it is hard for us to see you. Help us to recognize the face of Jesus Christ in neighbors and friends and in this community of faith. Guide us, God, so that we know you are present and you are near, saving us and giving us hope. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. At Horeb, the Mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle, and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Haziel as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimsha, as the king over Israel, and you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel Meholah, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Haziel, Jehu shall kill. 
And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave seven thousand in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. The word of the Lord. Psalm 85, 8-13 I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. For you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord and shall prepare for a good pathway. A reading from Romans, the 10th chapter. The righteousness that comes from faith says the word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. For one who believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says that no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. <gasps> Do you hear that? <gasps> I think somebody's calling us. It's Ethan. It's Jesus calling us? Yeah. We better be ready to respond when Jesus calls us. Yeah. Right? Yes. Sometimes it's scary when we're called to do something and to respond to people. But guess what? We don't need to be scared at all, do we? Right? How are you scared sometimes when you have to do things that are scary? Yes. You know why we don't have to be afraid? Do you know why? Because we have friends that are with us. We have family that are with us. I see ya. Family, our moms and dads, and our friends, our Thea. Yeah. And you know what? We also have God. He is with us always. So Jesus is near us, and when he calls us to respond, what do we need to do? We need to be listening for his call. Put it up to your ear, Kason. We need to be listening for that phone call, and we need to be ready to respond to the call. So don't forget about listening with our ears for that call. Even when it's scary. Do you guys want to pray with me? Yeah. Okay. I'll say the words and then you can repeat it, okay? Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus. We are listening yeah. for, your call. for your call. And we will be ready, and we will be ready. To, respond. to respond. Thank you. Thank you. For always, for always being, being near. near. In your name we pray. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 14th chapter. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, Jesus went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. 
And early in the morning, Jesus came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me! Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God, the Gospel of the Lord. Years ago, I had a friend and a co-worker who was a licensed pilot to, to fly small aircraft. I remember him saying that he had one thing he just could never understand. He could not understand parachute jumping. Why would anyone jump out of a perfectly good airplane? If there's nothing forcing you to jump, then stay in the plane. Of course, we know why people jump out of planes. They're feeling bold. They, they feel exhilarated and it's great soaring up there above the world in free fall. And it's just plain cool. So that's kind of how I think about this story. Peter. Why are you jumping out of a perfectly good boat? Let's be clear. From everything the story tells us, the disciples are not in any immediate danger. The disciples are fishermen. They've all done this before. They're from Galilee, after all. They've fished on the Sea of Galilee their whole lives. They know these waters. They know the wind and the waves. Yeah, they're out at night, and that might seem spooky to us, but we've read in other places in the scriptures that that's when they went out to fish at night. There's nothing here that's new to the disciples. And the story doesn't tell us that they're sinking. The story doesn't tell us that the boat is filling up with water. That's a different story. That's back in chapter 8. They were in danger there, but here, here the story doesn't tell us that they're in any kind of immediate danger at all. The wind and the waves are pushing them around. It's hard for them to get to shore, but they're not sinking. They're not in trouble. So Peter, Peter, why would you climb out of a perfectly good boat? It's a great question. It really drives our curiosity, but actually the story's not about Peter, not really. The story's about Jesus. And the story tells us at the very beginning that it was Jesus who put them into the boat. It was Jesus that put them together into the boat. And if we're talking about the whole story, then we also know that it was Jesus who first called them to follow. It's Jesus who made them one as disciples to follow him. It's Jesus who gave them their mission and Jesus who started them on their journey and sent them on the way. And for this journey, Jesus has equipped them with this boat, but Jesus has equipped them with each other and with the word. And then Jesus must withdraw for a time. His work for this day is done. He fed and healed people. He taught them and showed them compassion, and he healed what is broken among them. And so he sends his disciples on to the other side, to the next place, the next calling. 
And now Jesus withdraws to be with God and to pray. And then, then early in the next morning, almost like Jesus is foretelling the Easter story, that sunrise story, then Jesus comes to them, walking out to them. And like that Easter story, it's mystery. You can't explain it. We don't understand it. But there he is walking on the water. Jesus comes to them. Which is interesting. Because they didn't ask for Jesus to come. They weren't even expecting Jesus to come. And when Jesus does show up, they don't even know who he is. They mistake him for a ghost, for somebody else entirely. Even when the disciples get everything wrong, Jesus, this Savior, still shows up. That tells us a lot about Jesus. It tells us that Jesus isn't waiting on us. He's not waiting for disciples or, or all the rest of us to get everything figured out first. Jesus just shows up. Jesus arrives with a word of peace. Do not be afraid. And so it's for us too. When we're off course, when there's the wind and the waves, and we don't seem to understand what's going on, when we don't even recognize Jesus among us, Still, Jesus comes and he breaks in and he has a word of peace. Do not be afraid. That, that should be enough. That should be our story right there. Jesus comes and shows up. But, but then there's Peter. Peter, it turns out, wants something more. Peter wants to put Jesus to the test. Peter uses words that are similar to the words of Satan when Jesus was being tempted in the wilderness. Peter says, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you. It's important for us to notice as we read this story, Jesus never once said, I want disciples who can jump out of the boat. Jesus never said, Peter, I want you to go it alone out there. Remember, Jesus is the one who put them into the boat. Jesus is the one who put them together, gave them to each other. Jumping out of the boat, going it alone, that was Peter's crazy idea. And when Peter jumps out of a perfectly good boat, when Peter jumps out of the boat that Jesus gave him, when Peter decides to go it alone and do his own thing, that's when it gets scary. That's when Peter sees the waves, feels the wind, and gets terrified. Jesus has given us a boat. Jesus has given us each other. He's given us a church and a community and the scriptures. Jesus has given us a sturdy craft and sent us into the world. And sure, there are waves and there's wind and it's not going to be easy. And sometimes it's hard to get to wherever it is we are going. But on the way, Jesus comes. Jesus always comes. We don't always recognize him. We misunderstand who he is sometimes, and we get scared. But Jesus is here, right here. Sometimes we get off track, and we think that the story is, is our story. And so we want to jump out of the boat, the boat that Jesus gave us. 
We want to go it alone, make the story about us, and we want it all on our terms, and then, then we too want to put Jesus to the test. It never works out so well. It doesn't go so well when we forget the boat and the community that Jesus gave us. And still, still, this Jesus saves us. Jesus reaches out a hand to us, grabs us, and pulls us in. Us, people of little faith, Jesus grabs us and keeps us safe. That's really the good news. That's why ultimately this story isn't about Peter or about me or about any one of us. It's a Jesus story. It's about Jesus. He comes to us. He's in the boat with us. Do not be afraid, Jesus says, because truly, he is the Son of God. Amen. Prayers of Intercession Confident in God's care and moved by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and for all who are in need. God who comes to us, give courage to your church in the midst of storms around us. Help us to see Jesus in the world. Help us to hear and trust when Jesus says, do not be afraid. Make us courageous and bold to follow Jesus. God, the creator, care for the waters of the earth, the oceans and the seas, lakes and rivers, streams and ponds. Let all people and all your creatures have clean, healthy water and let your whole creation flourish. Lord of the nations, teach people and their leaders to live together. Make steadfast love and faithfulness meet. Let righteousness and peace embrace each other. Let everyone see and believe that you are the healing for all nations. God who answers prayer, let everyone who calls on you be saved. Come to those who are lonely. Hear those who call out to you. Support those who struggle to survive and fix what is broken in the world. We remember especially all those we name to you. Give them hope and confidence. God who calls us, we thank you for making us your disciples. Lead us to trust in you. Remind us that Jesus Christ is always with us. Make us confident in the peace that Jesus brings. God of salvation, you have been the hope of every generation before us, and you are the hope of all people now. Keep us firm in faith until finally we are all made one in you. Trusting in the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.